Hey guys, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about my hair, specifically low prosty hair. Um, just like things and what I do and you know if you have low prosty hair, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about that. So for anyone who's kind of new to the natural hair community, low prosty hair usually means that it's very hard for your hair to retain moisture. Or in other words, it's really hard um, to get moisture into your hair and oftentimes that could make your hair feel feel brittle and feel dry. And so one of the ways to retain moisture is heat. So you that would be like anything like steamers or anything with steam. Um, since I have low porosity hair, one of the ways that what one of the ways I get heat into my hair is um I use this. And this is actually a clothes steamer, but it's for your it's for your clothes, but I also use it for my hair. Um you have to be really careful with this because it does get very hot. This is called a My Little Steamer Go Mini. I think the full name is Joy Mango My Little Steamer. And I got this for around $14, $15 at Bed Bath & Beyond with a 20% coupon. So it was pretty cheap. I was actually going to get a cure do, but those are quite expensive. So I settled for this and it works very well. I just fill it up with water um, at the max and I turn it on. And I make sure it's about 12 inches away from my hair. Um, that way it's not like burning my hair or anything. Just a little fur, but... Just a little bit farther but enough so that heat gets to my hair so this is what I use to um, get moisture and I use it for deep treatments and conditioning and you know leave-ins and all of that so if you don't have a steamer and you can't afford one there's other ways to steam your hair um, I'm looking at my note card right here you could use the baggy method and I used to use that and that's essentially just um, trapping in the moisture so putting in your conditioner and everything in your hair and then taking a bag you like a grocery bag and putting it over your head and then taking a t-shirt and wrapping that in to trap the moisture and you can leave that in for a few hours or you can leave that overnight whatever works for you the, the issue with that method is that um if you leave it in overnight depending on how your hair reacts it could sometimes leave your hair feeling kind of mushy and then you know, possibly it might smell like mildew and all of that. So um, it's how your, however your hair reacts to it. So another one is you can also boil a pot of water. Um, I haven't tried this method, but I'm, I heard it works. Just boil a pot, steam comes out and then, you know, put your hair over the pot. And that's another way you can get moisture into your hair. So... <clears throat> One way to determine if you have low porosity hair is you want to, um, one of the ways is a strand test. So you want to do is take a strand of clean hair. You want to take like a, like a cup of water and fill it up and essentially take that strand and put it in the water. And after two or three minutes, if the strand is at the very top, it means you have low porosity. If it's in the middle, that means you have middle medium porosity, not middle porosity. And if it's at the bottom, it means you have, you know, high porosity. So if your strand is at the top, it means you have low porosity, which means that your cuticles are closed. It's really hard to get moisture in there. And um, the good thing about having low porosity hair is that once the moisture is in there, it's kind of hard for it to, to get out. So that's one of the things. Um... One thing that's kind of aside from low porosity, I guess it really depends on the person's hair, is protein sensitivity. Um, that's something I have on my hair, or I have with my hair. And I know this because I tried a couple of, of protein treatments. The last protein treatment that I used was the Shea Moisture Jamaican Black Castor Oil Mask. It has, it, the mask looks kind of um, like brown-ish, like a clay -Doh, and then it has like a yellowish covering. I tried that on my hair and my hair did not like it at all. I took that out 
I had it in for a little longer. I think it said to have it in for 20 minutes, but I had it in for almost like 45 minutes. And when I took it out, it my hair felt so rough and it felt so stiff. And it almost felt like parts of my hair were coming out. In addition, when I when I was washing my hair, I felt like I think I saw like little red bumps on my edges. So that was that protein treatment was a no no. Um, I think I'm just gonna go light on protein from now on and kind of just stay away from that. Um, so it was it was a no. If you have protein sem sensitivity, that's kind of one way you can determine your hair will feel different. It will feel like pretty rough and you know, brittle. And the thing about natural hair is that you want to make sure you get an equal balance of both protein and moisture. So protein isn't really my issue. It's more of retaining and getting enough moisture into my hair. And so that is all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment below, in the comments below, and I'll be sure to catch up with you guys next video.